Days 12 to 14 were all about slowing down and focusing on a smaller team. I figured if I could become more familiar with the basics of tagging and using assists, I could eventually work my way back up to a team of three. My training partner was also trying out different characters to put on his team, and rotated through a variety of characters that included Valentine, Fukua, and Robo Fortune. While he tended to lean more towards characters that had tools from a range, I opted to stick with the grappling duo of Beowulf and Cerebella. Let's talk about the matches. Here's what I focused on. A Cerebella B&B involving a bunch of charge motions. Since some of Cerebella's most important tools involve charge motions, I figured a good way to acclimate myself would be to sit down and force myself to learn a sequence in training mode that involved a bunch of them all in a row. Honestly, this was really uncomfortable at first, and I just couldn't get it for the longest time. I basically had to trick my brain to think of any move that didn't require a directional input as now requiring me to hold back. For example, standing medium punch is now back medium punch, and jumping heavy kick is now back heavy kick, and so on. Once I could handle that, it all started to click. Hype building combos with Cerebella's assist. Just like before, I was pretty dedicated to my basic game plan of start a combo as Beowulf, call Cerebella's assist to build hype, then spend that hype for big damage. This time around, I was focusing on finding a variety of situational combos that could all lead into a point where I would call Cerebella and taunt. Something to note about her assist is that due to the damage scaling in combos, it was important to try and save her assist for near the end of a combo, when the multi-hit attack she performs wouldn't compromise too much of my overall damage output. Beowulf without the chair By this point, I was starting to feel pretty comfortable with Beowulf, especially when I had access to his chair specials. Without the chair, I would try to focus on utilizing Wolf Blitzer, which is a dashing attack, to extend combos and carry my opponent closer to the chair's position. Additionally, without the chair, Beowulf has access to an extremely useful sweep with his giant Grendel arm, which became really important to use when my friend started focusing more on a zoning strategy. A quick summary of what I struggled with. Starting offense with Cerebella. Even though I felt more comfortable with Cerebella's combo sequences by now, the problem was actually landing one in the first place. I basically had no idea how to effectively close the distance on my opponent besides jumping in recklessly or attempting to charge run over and over. Even when I did get close, I almost always messed it up, whether that was using the wrong grab for the range I was at, or picking a move that was too slow to beat my opponent's counterattack. This was especially a problem when my opponent happily discovered the zoning potential of certain assists. Keeping track of Beowulf's grab actions. Depending on how you initiate his grab stance, Beowulf has a certain number of actions he can perform, such as a headbutt, knee strike, or EX finisher, before he automatically releases the opponent. For example, a hit grab only has two actions, a normal grab has four, and his wolf shoot has five. This seems complicated on paper, but it's easy to get a feel for over time. The crux of my hype building strategy involved getting to the point where I had one action left then using the headbutt to pop up the opponent into Cerebella's assist. I found myself losing count and dropping this a lot, which is indicated by the purple throw break VFX. Wake up timing. Once again, this was one of the most noticeable flaws in my ability to maintain offensive momentum. Not much to say here. Just like the previous episode, I often let my opponent stand up free after a knockdown, or at worse, allowed them to start offense against me. Something to note here, while not exactly the same thing, is that there was a simple conversion I was looking for that I messed up a lot involving Grendel Sweep into Gigantic Arm Super. This will only connect if the sweep hits on an OTG opponent, and I kept getting antsy and inputting the super command, despite realizing that it wasn't going to connect. I think going back to twos for a while was the right call for me, and I felt more ready to go back to a three-person team again in the matches to come. Even though I was far from using team mechanics to their fullest potential, it was helpful for me to work my way through at a slower pace. That being said, it's worth noting that despite the effort I'd put into learning her, I found at the end I actually didn't really like playing as Sarah Bella as much as I thought I would. 
Even so, I'm really glad I played her enough to come to that conclusion, since taking the time to practice her helped me learn many more subtle and important skills that would make picking up a new character that much more efficient and fun. Over the next few days, it was time for me to settle on a new and improved three-person team. We'll talk about that next time. Thanks for watching.